the answer process is it's what you term as how you're going to provide the solutions to the questions that the opponent is asking on the board. In, that's in simplified terms, that is what the answer is. It's your own individual take on how you're going to solutionize. Everybody's answer is different. My answer is different to your answer. We'll work it out in different ways. And now he's got like a two on one situation going with the pawn. Let's just push on to the um, knight. Smaller piece attacking a high piece can't be wrong. You'll work out your own mantras for yourself as to why you're making particular moves because I don't think like how you think and you don't think like how I think. And they propose the take back. Usually when that, they propose the take back, I think, well, they're setting me up here. There's nothing major. I can't take the bishop because he's got an x-ray through onto my king. Um, but this pawn can take this knight, so that's probably why they're asking for a tape pack. But, at the same time, the queen is going to get in the game, isn't it? So all might not be lost. So yes, everybody's answer is different, and you'll work out umpteen million types of ideas and strategies, etc. But it's about streamlining it and picking out your salient points to develop your own style and system of playing chess. So the answer cannot be refuted because at the end of the day, it is the art of putting pressure towards the king or the king area to kind of get some type of checkmate or to get some type of capitulation because you've either taken major pieces off the board or you've taken lots of pieces off the board or you've put your opponent in in a position whereby it's not worthwhile them actually continuing. So that's the whole answer. Um, it's in a nutshell, the opponent is asking the questions on the board. What are you going to do about this move? What are you going to do about that move? And your answer, your reply is your style, your system your concept so it's individual at the end of the day but there are basic basic under, underlying concepts that really will help your game um, which is basically keeping things simple direct you know and remove pieces from the board strategically it looks like the person's left the game Just let the time run out. Okay, another one for the resign button masterclass. Okay, we're off with a 10 minute game. Okay, keep it simple. Let's um, crack on maybe with, let's push him through the center here. Getting ready to open the bishop. Could take, let's take, keep it simple and um, get the bishop out, entice the pawn down I'm thinking about it so, oh yes they are okay let's go with the bishop so it's called baiting and I think there was a recent recent game where there was loads of baiting of pawns that I'd done with the bishops and loads of pawns coming down opening up space around the back and then we just took advantage of the spaces that have been created i'm going to develop the knight so yes we know there's space around the back here but nothing we can do about it until we start developing our pieces i'm going to castle don't want to lose tempo chasing anything that really we can't do until we're developing pieces so they're pushing more pawns down as usual you know it's fine if they know how to operate it and they're going to support their pieces etc etc but it looks to me like they want to want us to either take these pawns so they open up space around our castled king to make our castle king feel unsafe that's not what we want to do so i'm going to bring the knight here preemptive move so the pawn was going to be attacking almost puts a bit of almost puts a bit of pressure on this knight because this knight is supporting this pawn so maybe the fianchetto is going to kick in or maybe not and next thing for us is potentially looking to just do a small move with the bishop 
it is enticing to think, oh yeah, let's take these pawns, open up space around here. What else is the knight targeting? Is the queen got something? Queen's got a nice position here, but the knight is there. Can we get rid of the knight? Not at this moment in time. If we pushed up, opens up space around the king. We don't really want that. What's this knight doing? Is it going to do an out to come back in? No, no. Right. What do we have? Just get this bishop off the back. That's what I'm thinking. Let's do that. Just have a bit of this, but it's got no support. And this bishop is protected, but the knight is on it, so it's we're going to be up a minor piece if the knight does take. You do see that quite often, actually. Let's go here. Is my position okay after all of that? I'm sure it is, actually. So they're down a minor piece because of that. So he's going for an exchange, so really we could go for the exchange. But is there another thing that we can do first? I'm going to put a check on the king. Obviously the bishop is coming out. And anything else for them to think about? Could bring the bishop here attacking the queen. But am I going to rule the day not actually taking the queen off the board? It's a big gun. I'm already up a minor piece. Why not exchange the queen now? I don't really see a problem with it, you know. Mm, if we go here, then I mean, this pawn can push down onto our queen as well. We take with a check though. Oh, I'm tempted. I'm a, I'm a queen exchanger. Especially if I'm a minor piece up. I've got to stick with my guns. Don't need to be arty with that one. And look to just double up. Keep it simple now on the bishop. Okay, might still have that tempo to do this. Yeah. So knight's down, rook's not facing, so we can take with a check on the king. Could take the pawn and then get the rooks on the back rank. Not missing anything, am I? Not yet. So he's currently not able to link his rooks up. We do have two bishops now. Could have actually got the knight off the board for free as well. So that's going to be too late now. Damn. Little things like that you will miss in your games. And there's no complete answer. Yeah, he's just moved it out of the way now. So it's, he's never going back to that square again. Um, hit it once. Then he's just going to keep going back to that same square. He's not going to go there again. Okay, let's attack the knight anyway. Missed opportunity. Okay, let's take it. Nice and free for us. Looks like the opponent's got the red mist. Check. Rook with a check on the king has to go here, or else it's a checkmate. So he has gone there, but it's checkmate anyway. Excellent, that's a nice example of the answer process, I think. Okay, bringing the knight out, supporting the pawn, and trying to avoid this fried liver type thing. Bringing the bishop here, stopping that. And let's get the knight out, attacking the pawn, but making space for castling, really. And let's castle. Reason why I didn't take it, because you lose tempo, the rook comes, and then you're bouncing backwards. He then gets a 2 on 1 here with his knight and his rook. Let's just push up, getting ready to go for the exchange with the bishop. If possible, let's just grab. Keep that simple. It's nice that we've got this pawn here. I'm not going to bring the bishop here this time because he will have a fork on us. So this is where we bring the knight across, attacking the bishop. 
always mindful that this pawn is ready to jump down so we make space here if we get the time so it's familiarizing yourself with some types of openings you know there's openings that you will face on a regular basis and uh, you can work quite nicely with them and you can make them your baby okay well, let's just take this bishop you can make them your baby you can make them you know part of you I'm gonna x-ray through to the queen also gives my king a bit of company because the art is about keeping the king safe as well as putting pressure towards the, the, the opponent's king or the area around the king now it's usually a mess up with these pawns isn't it so we're just going to just steadily push it's looking to get rid of our knights with the bishop he could push then he pushes down let's just bring the rook across and leave it up to them as to, yeah as to what they want to do so they're capturing so it's an equal pawn situation just grabbing and obviously their pawn is going to be on our knight so we have to move the knight out of the way yep so we can move the knight here we can move the knight here yeah i like this one obviously this is going to come and the egg queen has got an x-ray through to the, the knight Let's go with this one. It looks like it's making its way towards the king area. It's got no support, it's not really targeting anything. You have to get stuff in there. And then these small pawns are just going to shoot it away. So you can sort of picture this type thing. Oh, exact move. In order to get the queen, because the queen will take, because it'll be on the knight. So we don't have to do that, it's just that our knight doesn't have anywhere apart from this square here. Then it can jump back here to safety. So we don't need to take the knight. We could bring our bishop back. I think I'm going to bring it back just to upset the apple cart. Get the knight here, but then this bishop is actually blocking the square that we wanted the knight to go to. But we can bring it back here. So that's what he's wanted to do, he's wanted to move this knight. At least the bishop's got protection if the knight is attacking our bishop. So we can move it out of the way and come around here. So I'm trying to understand what the opponent is trying to do. It's not gone for that yet. This pawn doesn't have any protection on. The bishop can take, queen can take. Getting rid of all of that idea and then take this pawn here maybe looking to come here for a little bit of a skewer looking thing if we're allowed to it all depends on what the opponent does so it's really strongly looking at yes you want to do your attacks but also what is the opponent able to do like in one of the previous games that we've just done within the answer um, process um, we thought we had it all nailed on with our queen and our rook type situation but the opponent found a magical move. I'd made a blunder and they took advantage of it. But those games are the games that kind of strengthen your resolve and strengthen your pattern recognition um, in being able to try to escape from those things. Okay, so he's moved and well, I'm just going to take, I think. I don't really want to overanalyze that. And the bishop putting a check on the king seems to be pretty straightforward. just going for the skewer thing like we said it's probably looking to come down here and attack a pawn I'm gonna take so it's not straightforward in this I mean we're only plus one after all of that and they do have a little bit of a situation going here so I'm gonna bring the rook keeping it simple looking to maybe challenge the bishop also, if they don't move, then we can get the bishop off the board for free. And, well, okay. 
it's one of those sticky situations in it do we go for it yeah rook check he just moves his king back and then we take his bishop but then he takes our bishop am i happy with my position i think so because then we can take and he is not necessarily able to come across so i think we win out a little bit there let's put the check on So I was checking to make sure that I got sure footing and my position is going to look beneficial for me before actually going for the move the movements. Because we see so many attacks and they've they've resigned. Okay. Yep, that was a nice answer process game. 